cryptography is a subject that has been around for a long time and it always draws attention whenever there's something with the government because governments have secrets and they try to protect them and one way that they can do that is with mathematics right you can use mathematics to encrypt a message so if you have a decrypted message that's called the plain text and then you can encrypt it and then send it to someone else and that other person can you know decrypt it and get back the original message that's the idea behind cryptography it's to be able to you know send secret messages from one party to another and cryptography always becomes popular whenever there's something like in the news or when a movie comes out there was that movie a Beautiful Mind, that was about John Nash. And then more recently, there was the movie The Imitation Game, that was also a very, very good movie. And then there was that incident or that story with uh, Edward Snowden, I believe his name was. I think he worked for the NSA. So anytime you know stuff like that comes out, the general public really starts to pay attention to this field. But this is actually a subject that is studied in colleges. This is the international edition of a book that I used. Uh, it's called Introduction to Cryptography with Coding Theory. And so I actually read almost this entire book uh, a long time ago. And I took a course where we had to work through almost the entire book. The professor was really, really good. And he gave us really good notes and he explained everything in great detail. So it was a great opportunity. So if you want to learn cryptography, I highly recommend this book. And I will leave a link in the description of this video in case you want to check out this book. It's the one by Trapp and Washington. Now, I feel like I looked it up a couple days ago and there weren't that many copies available, but I'll look again and I'll try to leave a link in the description to any copies uh, I can find. I don't know how popular this is today, cryptography, but I'm assuming it still is. Um, let's just go through the topics so you can see what this book contains. This is not a course that uh, a lot of schools offer, and when it's offered, it's only offered sometimes. So if you are interested in cryptography and you find a school that has that course, uh, I would say definitely take it. Another way to learn, obviously, is with a book like this one. This is a very beginner-friendly book, and it's just really good for beginners. Like, you can just start with this. It teaches you the number theory that you need, so if you haven't had number theory, you, you might be okay. You can read through it. It explains the number theory needed and stuff like that, so. Uh, I never actually studied number theory, but obviously I did have a lot of mathematics background and I was okay with the number theory uh, in this book. This is by Trapp and Washington. And the copyright here is 2006 and 2002, so it's fairly new. Overview of cryptography and its applications. Classical crypto systems. Talks about the different crypto systems, and then it has see, basic number theory. That's what I was telling you. It, it, it basically goes through and it explains the number theory that you need uh, for some of the cryptography, which is really good. It does a really good job, actually. It's a good book. It's a great book. I think it's an expensive book, though. Uh, there's a reason I have the international edition, um, but I really wish I had like a, a hardcover version, which I don't know if it exists. The data encryption standard, and we're spending a lot of time on this. The advanced encryption standard, the all-famous RSA algorithm, discrete logarithms, hash functions, digital signatures, security protocols, digital cache, secret sharing schemes. Then we have games, flipping coins over the telephone, poker over the telephone, zero knowledge techniques, information theory, Elliptic curves, it's a little harder here. Lattice methods, error correcting codes. I don't think this is something that uh, we covered in my class. Quantum techniques and cryptography, I also don't think we did this. Yeah, I don't think we did these last two, uh, or even, I don't even think we did lattice methods. I think we might have stopped that elliptic curves. I think we touched on that and then the course ended. Then we have some Mathematica examples, uh, some Maple examples, and then some MATLAB examples. And then that's it. So it says here, let's read the preface. You can see who this book is for. This book is based on a course in cryptography at the upper level undergraduate and beginning graduate level that has been given at the University of Maryland. Okay, so University of Maryland since 1997. And a course that has been taught at Rutgers 
since 2003. So I took this um, as a graduate student, okay, not as an advanced undergrad. So it is meant for people who know some mathematics, but honestly, um, you could start. You could start from the beginning, right? I mean, it's it's not going to require a lot of math. Just motivation, um, and then some of the notation you might not be familiar with if you don't know math. But honestly, if you have the right motivation, I don't think it should, it should hold you back from getting this book and learning. Uh, it talks about the course designments designs. The courses should be up to date. Okay, materials should be accessible. Yeah, it just talks about what they're covering. But I think the key point there is that it's for advanced undergrads and beginning grad students. Overview of cryptography and its applications. Let's read this together. It says here, people have always had a fascination with keeping information from others. Hmm. As children, many of us had magic decoder rings for exchanging coded messages with our friends and possibly keeping secrets from parents, siblings, or teachers. History is filled with examples where people tried to keep information secret from adversaries. Yeah, right? So like usually governments and stuff. Kings and generals communicated with their troops using basic cryptographic methods to prevent the enemy from learning sensitive military information. Yeah, it always has to do with, with the military. For example, there's all those movies and stories about World War II. In fact, Julius Caesar reported to use a simple cipher, which has been named after him. Wow, right? As society has evolved, the need for more sophisticated methods of protecting data has increased. Now, with the information era at hand, the need is more pronounced than ever. As the world becomes more connected, the demand for information and electronic services is growing. And with the increased demand comes increased dependency on electronic systems. Right, like passwords, right? Like if you sign into your bank account or your credit card account, there's a password, right? So you need that stuff, right, to protect you from, from bad people in the world. You know, if, if, if everyone was good and there weren't bad people, we wouldn't need passwords. I always think that. But no, um, you just always have to be careful, right, unfortunately. Already the exchange of sensitive information, such as credit card numbers, over the Internet is common practice. Protecting data and electronic systems is crucial to our way of living. It is. The techniques needed to protect data uh, belong to the field of crypt cryptography. Actually, the subject has three names. Cryptography, cryptology, and cryptanalysis, which are often used interchangeably. Yeah. And it, it's kind of interesting that, you know, since it's so important, right, um, you think it would be taught more in math departments, but it's not. It's not. And here it gives you some, some basic... A basic outline. This is cool. I think you're gonna like this. Check this out. So, so here's Alice. So she's she's always you know Alice has the the friendly message, and she has what's called the plain text, and she encrypts it using a key. It becomes the cipher text, and then Eve. Eve is evil, right? So Eve is trying to eavesdrop. I'm sure you've heard that. that there's an old I believe that's the right word eavesdropping. Like maybe that's why they picked the name Eve. Like she's listening in, and she's like, oh, I have the the the, the message. You know, she wants to grab it. And then here um, you have the decryption key to decrypt it, and then Bob gets the message. And that's the, those are the names they use throughout the book. Uh, and here, here let's, let's read this. This is really cool. Here it kind of explains it. In the basic communication scenario depicted in figure 1.1, which we just saw, there are two parties, we'll call them Alice and Bob, who want to communicate with each other. A third party, Eve, is a potential eavesdropper. When Alice wants to send a message called the plain text to Bob, she encrypts it using a method prearranged with Bob. Usually, the encryption method is assumed to be known to Eve. Oh, she's bad. What keeps the message secret is the key. When Bob receives the encrypted message called the ciphertext, he changes it back to plain text using a decryption key. Eve could have one of the following goals. Ooh, let's see what her goals are. Read the message, find the key, and thus read all messages encrypted with that key, corrupt Alice's message into another message, in such a way that Bob will think Alice sent the altered method, so change the information. Masquerade as Alice and thus communicate with Bob even though Bob believes he's communicating with Alice. So yeah, and it's kind of sad. I think about like emails and stuff, like all the scammy emails that you know, people receive and stuff, you know? It's really sad. It really is, it really is sad. Uh, it's fun to think about mathematically, but when you think about other people actually doing it, it's not so cool. Uh, it really isn't. And then talk about possible attacks. And this really like lays the foundation um, for you know the idea and and these words you know plain text cipher text key encryption key decryption key these are used throughout. We talk about talks about classical crypto systems. Hmm. Really cool, and yeah, it's just a nice book with all kinds of methods. It has a lot of information. You know, when I was taking this class, I remember one night. It was three o'clock in the morning, 
or it was close to three. And my friend was over and we were eating pizza and we were tired. We had a test the next day. And we get this email from the teacher in the middle of the night. And it's a list of topics for the test. And my friend looks at me and he goes, that's the test, that's the test. Uh, because he was, my friend was an old high school teacher and he, uh, he knew how teachers thought. So I guess the teacher was up late and he's like, my class is gonna fail this test, let me just give him a study guide. <laughs> so we stayed up till like, I don't know, like four or five and we studied and we did okay on the test. It was just, it was just a lot of material, you know, a lot of material. Because this book, this book contains a lot of material. So because it was a graduate class, our teacher was like, okay, we're gonna cover everything. And it's not that it's hard, it's not that the material is hard, it's just when you're covering so much and so much information, it's like you barely have time to absorb it. So I think this book uh, would be better suited for two courses. So if, if you're a teacher and you're watching this video, maybe you could, you could probably teach two careful, slow semesters with, with a book like this. Whereas as a graduate student, you know, we did it in one semester and I don't know, I think having more time to dissect everything and maybe, maybe more homework and I don't know, just more time to really test our knowledge would have been better. And it has exercises and stuff. Let me show you. I believe it has exercises. We, he always gave us, uh, he always made his own homework problems. I don't think he ever, well, maybe he, I don't remember. I actually don't remember if he gave us exercises or, or if he made his own problems. I don't recall. It's been a long time. I do remember the test though. It might have been just test. It could have been that we didn't have homework, but and he just gave us like, yeah, I think he just gave us practice exercises and sometimes worksheets and things to do, but we never turned it in. You know, I think the grade was pretty much entirely from tests. Yeah, so interesting book. I just wanted to show you an option for cryptography. It's, it's, I think this is the only one I have, and this is the one I use because uh, it's for beginners. And again, went through almost the whole book. Uh, it's not hard. Um, so I think if you're an undergraduate and you know some mathematics, you could do it. And even if you don't know number theory, it teaches you number theory, right? So that's kind of cool. Yeah, basic number theory. It starts, at the, starts at the beginning, right? Divisibility. But you see, you have to know how to read stuff like this. So you have to know how to read mathematics. So the more math you have, the better. The prime number theorem. Yeah. If you want to learn mathematics, by the way, I do have courses. Uh, they're on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform. But if you go through my links, it helps me. And also, um, I lowered the prices. So if you go through my links, I think you'll get a really low price. And yeah, oh, and if you want to subscribe and you feel like you got, if you feel like you got any value from this content, uh, subscribe if you want to. And the main takeaway from this video you should get is that cryptography is a really cool subject. Uh, it's really not taught very often in colleges for some reason. And if you have the opportunity to take it, take it. I think you might like it. And if you want to learn on your own, I think this is a good book. So I think those are the key takeaways from crypto, crypto, about cryptography, right? It's a subject that is really cool and really useful, but for some reason it's just, it's just not taught a lot. Anyways, until next time, good luck, take care, keep doing mathematics.